وكذلك أوحينا إليك روحا من أمرنا ما كنت تدري ما الكتاب ولا الإيمان ولكن جعلناه نورا ولكن جعلناه نورا نهدي به من نشاء من عبادنا وإنك لتهدي إلى صراط مستقيم صراط الله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ألا إلى الله تصير الأمور remember, remember, الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praise due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah I'd like to welcome you dear viewers to another in our series In the Names of Allah And we have been looking at uh, Allah's names from the perspective of understanding them, understanding their meanings, understanding their relevance to us, uh, not just what they mean linguistically, but what they mean in terms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because oftentimes there is a, a, a gap between what the name means linguistically and what it means when applied to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we'll be focusing on is obviously what it means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that aids us in understanding Allah. And in understanding Allah that should aid us in worshipping Him. Because the basic principle that we are following is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had said, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَعُ الْحُسْنَى فَادْعُوهُ بِهَا the most beautiful names all belong to Allah. So call on Him with them. Worship Him through them. So this is what we are uh, trying to uh, do by understanding uh, the names, how they relate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then looking into their relevance to us as human beings, where it is uh, possible for us to reflect these meanings, they have an effect on us, and they should be manifest in terms of our own actions, then we do so, where they are limited to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is nothing of them that we can take on for ourselves, then we praise Allah with them. And that's as far as we go. In this segment, we're looking at the seventh name, Al-Quddus. And this name is mentioned only twice in the Qur'an. One of the times is in Surah Al-Jum'ah, in the first verse. يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكُ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ All in the heavens and the earth glorifies Allah, the Sovereign, the Holy, the Almighty, the All-Wise. The basic meaning of Al-Quddus uh, is derived from the word Quds. Quds which means basically pure and blessed. So the divine name Al-Quddus, according to the scholars, uh, is that it is refers to one who is perfectly free from any deficiency. Holy in all aspects. Now in terms of the believer and how that name relates to the believer. First and foremost, that belief, the belief that Allah is free from any weakness or deficiency, should lead the believer to reject any kind of references which would ad address to him or would attribute to him any kind of imperfection. Some of these we can find in the Jewish and Christian scriptures, for example, and in many of the other scriptures. But just as an example, in Genesis 2, verse 2, it states there, and on the seventh day, God finished His work, which He had done, and He rested on the seventh day from all His work, which He had done. This is the attribution of 
rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is an unholy attribute. This is a, an attribute of His creatures. It is not an per- attribute of perfection. It's an attribute of weakness. People rest because of a need to rest. So the attribution, uh, the attribution of this attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is totally inappropriate. We also find in Exodus 32 verse 14, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. Repenting. God repenting. Repenting to whom? This whole issue of repentance, this is for the creatures. Those who could do wrong. Those who went after doing wrong, they turn back to Allah in repentance and Allah forgives them of their, of their sin. So this is the process of repentance. So it is inconceivable that Allah would repent. So we would reject all such uh, texts you know, as being either man-made, distorted, interpolated, whatever, but could not possibly be of a revealed text from God. Also, when we reject the deficiencies, we reject deficiencies which include those made by Muslims, wherein they share the opinions of others who look at Islam in a negative light and say, for example, that Allah's laws are backward, they're brutal, they're unjust. For a Muslim to agree to that is to attribute to Allah deficiency. Because a backward law means that it's not suitable for the time, for our times. Allah prescribed it 1,400 years ago and it's now outdated, not really applicable today. That is a deficiency. Allah who knows the future of human beings, He knows the nature of human beings in human society. Therefore, He shouldn't have to make laws and then have to remake them again. He lays down laws which are suitable for human beings in all times and all places. So, for example, people take the law, the Islamic law regarding polygamy, and they look at this as being backward. Yes, people in the ancient times did it, but it's not suitable to our modern world. And as a result, they either add conditions, so they say you can't do it unless you get your wife's permission, when Allah has already given permission, or they say that you can't do it you know, unless there's something wrong with your wife. She's sick uh, or something. But just to go and take another wife when your wife is perfectly in good health, this is not acceptable. But this was not the way of the first generation. Prophet Muhammad didn't marry additional wives because his existing wives were incapable. Uh, same thing with his companions, etc. So the law for polygamy is a law which deals with human need. It's not restricted to the time in which it was revealed. Human society has this need. It has had this need since the earliest of civilizations. It is the norm. Women outnumber men. And polygamy is the way for the excess women in the society to find a home without resorting to being mistresses, uh, lovers, uh, prostitutes, etc., etc. Also, among the laws which may be looked at as brutal is the death penalty. Whether it is by cutting off the head or however it is done. The general position held by many Western countries now is that the death penalty is, is brutal. It shouldn't be applied. People should, lives should not be taken. But this was the revealed law. This was the revealed law from God. And where it is applied, it 
has the impact in society. It may not be applied properly, and so the impact is not what it should be. But we can see, even in a place like America, where the idea of, uh, you know, no death penalty, cancellation of death penalty exists in some states, other states have chosen not to. They continue to apply it. Um, another example, in terms of brutal, is the cutting off of the hand. Death penalty maybe is more widely used. It's found in many different countries in the world. But cutting off the hand, maybe it is only in Islamic law that we have this law today. They say this is brutal. You chop off this hand, the hand which God has created. That is very brutal. Well, the bottom line is that where it is applied in the society, it has a benefit. A greater benefit than the harm to the individual. Islam looks at the overall society as a whole. And that hand is removed to protect the society. So Allah's law is perfect. Allah's law is perfect in this manner. It's not brutal. Allowing that person a free hand to steal in the society and put everybody else's security at risk. That is brutal. The, 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 the lives and the, the society which functions with thievery, widespread. This is a brutal society. People get their fingers chopped off because somebody wants to get a ring from your finger. People are knocked down, beat up for their shoes that they're wearing or the jacket that they're wearing. I mean, this is brutality. This is the real brutality. And that's happening in the societies that don't apply this law. So, Islam, when it prescribes the removal of a person's hand, this is to protect the society from the greater harm of that individual. And it's not just for any individual. See, because when the law is applied, one has to be aware. One has to be conscious that this law is not just applied for each and every person, anybody who steals anything. There are conditions. If a person steals something which is a part of public property, meaning he owns a part of it from a library, from a public bus, or something like this, then his hand is not going to be cut off. He may be punished in some other way, jailed, whatever, fined, but his hand won't be cut off. Similarly, if somebody drops something on the ground and he picks it up, takes it, his hand won't be cut off for that either. That, there was temptation, so he took it. His hand will be cut off if he picks a pocket, because to pick a pocket, you know, this is not something that temptation came. This is something a person trains for. He trains for it and he takes uh, this with skill. With skill. So this is the hand that is cut off. The hand of the professional thief. With that, dear viewers, we're going to take a brief break here and we'll be seeing you after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. When you are weak and the road seems long Remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. My name is Sharif Tuni, and this is brought to you from Huda TV. Um, in today's edition, we'll be discussing about uh, the day and night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equated the samawat with darkness, the firmament with darkness, and equated the earth with light. Why? Are there really pillars that cannot be seen? Or is it an unseen oh, no. pillar? Everything is running, but the relationships are fixed. Yes. So that it would appear to people as if nothing is running, you see. We are destroying the, our environment with our own hands. And that's why the Quran says, الْفَسَادُ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِي النَّاسِ لِيُذِيقَهُمْ بَعْضَ الَّذِي عَمِلُوا لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ Remember, just remember, seek strength from the strong. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. All praise due to Allah, and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last messenger of Allah. I'd like to welcome you back, dear viewers, to our program, In the Names of Allah. Prior to the break, we were looking at one of the aspects or the impacts of belief in this name, Al-Quddus, what impact it should have on the life of the believer. We said that it should lead him or her to reject the statements and the arguments of those who would describe Allah's love.